Okay, so I've got a Synology NAS, and I'm trying to recover files from an old PC and copy these onto the NAS. These files came from a Linux RAID with four one terabyte disks, and they were in RAID 5. And what I want to do is copy them onto my new disks, which are four three terabyte disks, also in RAID 5, but I've enabled Synology Hybrid RAID 1, so I can grow this in the future. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to extract these four disks out of my old PC, and basically use them to supplement the four disks which are currently in my Synology 8 disk NAS. I'll transplant these across and copy the files off and then once I'm done with that I will can grow the RAID when I want. My NAS is currently on and I've put the disks into the toolless trays. Here I can just quickly slide them into the chassis one by one and wait for them to come online. This takes about 5 or 10 seconds per disk. Here we go. So now I'm on the Synology web dashboard. If I go onto the storage manager, I can see the four disks which I've just added. That's when it loads. So you can see four which are currently in use and four unused disks. Now, if I was to create a new volume using these disks, the Synology RAID manager would overwrite the contents of these disks, losing the data which is on it which is not what I'm going to do. So I'm going to go onto the menu, into the services, and enable remote access via SSH. The quickest way to do this is using the search facility. Just look for terminal and SNMP, and enable SSH on port 22. Now, the default admin user is disabled, so I'm going onto the user's control panel to enable remote access for the admin user. Just click it, edit, and then uncheck disable this account. Now that I've okayed this, I can use my favorite SSH client to connect to the NAS. I drag this across and use the SSH command on my Mac. I'm SSHing in as the admin user on the IP address, which I've is the same as the web UI. If you've got a Windows PC, you probably have to use PuTTY or something like that. So now that I'm in, I can cat the md stat file, which shows the status of all the RAID devices. Here I see md2 is my main RAID, which is currently set at 8 terabytes. This is built on uh, the four disks SDA, B, C, and D. And then there's a couple of other RAID arrays, which are uh, created by the NAS for its own housekeeping. Now I can ls the dev folder to see which devices are on the NAS. And I'm grepping for SD for the disks. I can see there's my SD A, B, C and D disks, which are the four three terabyte disks I first added. Then I've also got the new disks E, F, G and H. Now that I know what disks are on the system, I can use the MD admin tool to examine what the RAID status is for each of those disks. So I'm going to sudo mdadm, if I can type it. Now that I know what disks are on the system, I can use the mdadm tool to examine the RAID status for those disks. So I'm going to sudo mdadm-examine dev sda1. And I see that it comes from a RAID 5 array, which is originally 3 terabytes, and the disk is 1 terabyte. Here I also see the partner disks, which make up this array. I'll use these IDs to reconstruct the RAID array. So again, we sudo mdadm-assemble, then I use dev md3, the first free ID for our RAID arrays. Here, 0, 1, and 4. 2 and 4 are taken. Now I just use the IDs of all the disks I want to add to this array. So that's SDE1, SDF1, SDG1, and then finally SDH1. Now I've entered this command, I can hear the disk spinning up, and it's created the array. 
Now all I have to do is mount this array. So I'm going to create a folder called old raid or something similar to that. I need to sudo to this folder. All I have to do is sudo mount dev md3, which is the device I created, and mount it onto the folder old raid. Give this a second. And to verify that all my files are there, I can just ls old raid. And here we are. There's all my files. Now all I have to do is copy them using the Linux cp command recursively from old raid onto my new volume. And that's it. I can copy those at my own liberty. Remember, once you've done, you need to disable SSH access and then disable the admin user account as well. That's it. And there's all, all there is to restoring the raid.